Welcome to CityShopPoint.com. Today we are starting with a basic introduction to .NET. Okay, so what we are going to today, what we are going to learn today is what is a .NET, how code is executed in .NET, what is managed and unmanaged code, different types of components of .NET framework, and basics of garbage collector. Okay, so first what is dot net now most of people i heard they are saying like that dot uh, net is a programming language now this is absolutely wrong dot net is a framework dot net is a framework and which is used to build distributed computing applications now what is a distributed computing applications see this figure what happen is here two servers are interconnected with internet and some users are accessing data by using mobile devices desktops laptops and whatever other devices so mainly distributed computing application is like uh, today nowadays web application mobile applications something like that uh, for a better understanding purpose we can say a given example like that suppose you have a friend and he is uploading a photo to a facebook so when he is uploading a photo to his Facebook, where the photo is actually available on Facebook's web server, right? So what you have to do to see the photo? Of course, you need a device. Maybe it's a mobile device or laptop, tablet, whatever it may be. After getting a device, second thing you need is internet connection, right? Without internet connection, you can't access facebook right so when you have these two things one device and internet connection now you can connect to the facebook server through internet and you can able to see the your friend for fo friends photo right so this is basically an um, idea about what is a distributed computing application now code execution process now in dotnet code is executed twice Right. twice means code is compiled two times in dotnet so what actually happens in first dotnet source code is compiled by language compiler lc means language compiler and that language compiler generates an intermediate language which is called msil microsoft intermediate language microsoft intermediate language is a form common form for which all dotnet supported language will come into the, this common form okay dotnet supports 63 63 languages so all these 63 languages will come into a common form which is known as msil without msil we can't means clr clr can't convert that code or execute that code now what is clr will come across but first we'll focus on this so this is on first compilation first source code is compiled by language compiler and then language compiler will generate that msil code now you might got a question what is dotnet source code okay so here is an example so here i just give three languages that is c db.net and jsrp so there are more than 60 languages as i told you 63 languages are there so this is out of this 63 languages so every language these three languages are here you can say this is source code and for every language their respective language compiler for c sharp code there is c sharp compiler for vb.net code there is vb.net compiler like that and these compilers will generate the respective source codes msil right so this is all about first compilation now what happens in second compilation is that msil code which was generated by the language compiler comes into clr clr is common language runtime which is the most important part of dotnet framework without clr there is nothing can happen okay so what clr does is clr converts that msil code into native code okay native code means nothing but a machine code okay then code is executed so in this way in Norton framework, this code is compiled two times. So we can get with these notes. 
see what uh, I have told is the same thing in .NET code is executed twice first compilation source code is compiled by respective language compiler then intermediate code is generated which is MSIL in second compilation MSIL code is converted into native code okay here one point is to remember is that always first compilation is slow always first compilation is slow and second compilation is first okay because uh, every different pro program languages have their local language compiler so they take some times okay but once they are converted to msil clr will execute it faster right? okay so we are done with code execution process now coming to the part of managed and unmanaged code okay first of all we we have to need what is unmanaged and what is unmanaged code as i told you dotnet supports 63 programming languages right so these 63 programming languages are managed code means what actually see for every managed code for every source code there is one language compiler is there when language compiler compiles the code and generates msil and generates msil means that code is managed code okay for a source code when language compiler compiles it and generates msil that is managed code and suppose for there is one source code for which msil is not generated means language compiler can't generate the msil code for that source code that source code is unmanaged code okay so how this managed code and unmanaged code is executed so managed code is executed before we see in those the diagrams you know the same way see managed code is compiled by language compiler then msil is generated and msil is code goes to clr and clr again is converted to internet code and then code is executed but for unmanaged code unmanaged code is directly comes to the clr if language compiler doesn't generate MSIL code, then that source code is come to the CLR and CLR redirects it to the operating system and operating system is responsible for the code execution process. So here are some points. The code for which MSIL is generated after language compiler compilation and that code is directly executed by CLR. Of course, if MSIL is there, then that code is executed by CLR. And if MSIL is not available, that code is not directly executed by CLR, rather CLR redirects that code to the operating system. Now here one point is to remember is that CLR provides all facilities and features of .NET only to managed code. Now what are the facilities like language interoperability, automatic memory management and exception handling. These are the facilities. We will come across what are these automatic management and language interoperability will come across okay so now we're done with managed and unmanaged code now this is the one part components of dotnet framework this is a very important part okay so dotnet framework is basically divided into two types one is bcl another one is clr so what is bcl bcl is base class libraries and what is clr common language runtime now what actually CLR is doing is CLR is fully responsible. Everything happens in .NET. For that, CLR is responsible. Now, this CLR is a combination of four things: CLS, CTS, GC, and JIT compiler. Now, what is CLS? CLS is common language specification. CTS is common type system. GC is garbage collector, and JIT is just in time compiler. So, in this session, we will focus on this only CLR and his associates okay so what is cls cls uh, means actually this is as you you name you can see the name common language specification means one specification for all languages like so what actually here happens is see every programming languages have its own syntactical rules which is used to write code okay so one programming languages syntactical rules cannot understood by another programming languages but what happened in dotnet is dotnet supported 63 languages right 63 different languages so how dotnet is able to execute these codes okay because they have already different syntactical rules right so what happens is 
CLRs CLS has a common specification to its MSIL code. When language compiler compiles and converts that source code into a common form MSIL, for if MSIL is generated, then for that a common language specification or a common specification is there which is used by CLR to execute the code so basically CLS is these things now benefits of CLS is CLS provides language interoperability now what is language interoperability language interoperability means it provides code execution facilities to different application which are written in different programming languages right so you uh, you have a java application now you want to run in dot and framework so if it provides the facility means it is language interoperable now this language interoperability is achieved by managed and unmanaged code now what is managed and unmanaged code we already discussed right now, coming to the cds common type system now what is common type system is like I said, every programming languages have their own syntactical rules. See, in the same way, they have their own so means what they have their own data types. So another programming language cannot understand what the data types of a other language. For example, C sharp cannot understand uh, what a Java data type is, right? So how these things will happen here in dot .NET is they have the common specification for all those other programming languages if MSL is generated right so these things can be achievable by like two ways one is value types and reference types means common type specification is divided into two categories now what is value type and what is reference type the data type which store data directly into their memory location is called as value types okay for example, we can say integer. Okay. Integer um, a is equal to zero, right? So this is a value type. Now, what is a reference type? Reference type means which data type do not store data into the memory location, rather refers to other memory location. Now, for example, you can say string. String my name is equal to something like that. So that value is not stored directly into the my name. That stores on somewhere else. So um, in future upcoming videos we will do a video on value type and reference type for that time you can just remember these things right and one more thing is here uh, for value type memory allocation is done in stack whereas reference type value um, for his reference types memory allocation is done in heap right now this is the most important thing in CLI garbage collector what is a garbage collector by the name only you can understand garbage means it was so it clean up clean up the memory right so first these are the points some points that provides automatic memory management of what is automatic memory management means for example you just created one application and you run it so it runs again you want to run another application it runs again you want to run another application like this uh, after some time there will be period come when you don't have memory you will face insufficient memory problem so garbage collector is responsible to provide automatic memory management it automatically cleans up the memory for your applications right how it will do we will come across right so what actually happens is first garbage collector divides a memory into three generation which is called a generation 0 generation 1 and generation 2 see these are the empty generation means there is no application currently running okay so this is a representation diagram um, in real time this is nothing nothing like that okay so generation 0 and generation 1 generation 2 right so after dividing into generation what it does is you just run it application and your application creates some objects like for you just uh, you run an application it creates a1 again you run something it creates b1 like that if it creates eight applications and uh, c1 d1 u1 f1 g1 h1 all are the what objects and it fills up the generation zero now here one point is to remember is that whenever you run an application the first object will come into the generation 0 means newly created object will be placed in generation 0 only okay now 
your generation zero is completely filled up now what will happen right after your generation zero is completely filled up garbage collector will perform a collection process now what is the collection process collection process is divided into two types one is compact fit one is marking phase one is compact fit and one is marking phase now what happens in compact phase and what happens in marking phase right in marking phase it is it just finds which object is reachable and which object is unreachable right and it makes a collection which object is makes a collection of reachable objects and makes a collection of unreachable objects then in um, compact phase what it does is which objects are all no, not reachable or unreachable it destroys these objects and which objects are reachable it will promote these objects to the next generation so here you can see c1 d1 and g1 h1 are unreachable objects we just mark them okay so these objects are destroyed after destroying these four places are empty now e1 b1 e1 f1 are the reachable objects so what garbage collector does is it just promoted these four objects to the next generation so currently what happens after promoting these objects generation zero is completely available for your newly created objects so like this it will process until the completion of generation 2 okay so in every generation it performs the collection phase right but here one thing is to remember that this all operation is takes the time of 1 by 10th nanosecond can you imagine that 1 by 10th nanosecond okay so you can imagine how fast is garbage collector so it provides automatic memory management so that burden on the programmer will be reduced right so this is all about today's introduction to c sharp sorry introduction to dotnet if you like this video then please subscribe our channel like our video and if you have any suggestion to improve for our improvement or you want something some videos on some topics then please feel free to the comment thank you for watching this video